There are a lot of ways to give your photos a dark and moody look. So in this video, I'll show you one way to do it and give you a free preset in the description because this video is sponsored by Storyblocks. So usually moody photos have less detail in the shadows and usually less saturation, at least with certain colors. Of course, there's no one set way to edit photos, but usually the way we go about editing is to create looks that will work across a wide range of photos. So here we have a six second exposure in front of a very secret location that you've definitely never seen before. First, we can see the image is a bit underexposed, which isn't a big deal. With our Canon 35 millimeter lens, we find that turning on profile corrections always brighten things up a lot. Now we can just bump the overall exposure by 0.15 or so. Then I'll warm up the white balance just to get a little more color out of Rachel's jacket and the greenery in the background. Then I wanna make some tone curve adjustments. And if you aren't familiar with the tone curve, we actually made an entire video about it, which I'll also link below. But basically the black point is the bottom left point and its position determines how blacks are interpreted in the image. So if you want that lifted black faded look, you can lift your black point so that nothing in your image is true black. Then you could just add another point to bring the shadows back down. But that look is a little too stylized for my preference, so I'm gonna lower the black point to around 12. Then just create a few more points. Something like this should be good. Now let's flip over to the parametric mode on the tone curve. Now this works in conjunction with the point mode we were just in, not instead of it. Again, this is just finding the right balance that looks good to your eye. So I want a little more detail in the waterfall, so I'll pull the highlights back, a little boost to the lights, and a touch darker for the darks and shadows. Now I'll head back up to the basic panel. Since I almost always add most of my contrast in the tone curve, I usually lower the overall contrast in the basic panel. Now here's where you can decide to either retain more information in your highlights or create more contrast. Decrease to retain, increase to create contrast. I'm gonna bump my highlights up to the mid 30s and now again, the same goes with the shadows. If you want to really keep things dark, lower that bad boy. But you can still give something a dark and moody look while still boosting the shadows. I'm actually gonna bump these up to the mid 70s. Next, the texture slider will give more detail in the image. So around 10 looks good here. Now, dehaze. I love adding a touch of dehaze. It adds some contrast, some saturation, and just gives a bit of a punch that we want. And then I'll drop the overall vibrance and saturation by about 10. Now I'll adjust the RGB value of the pixels with the calibration panel at the bottom. I suggest cranking the hue sliders in each direction to see the effect it has on your images and then toning it down when you find something you like. In this case, I'm going to mute a lot of the colors with the saturation sliders. I can then punch up some specific colors next. All right, so here's where you can take some creative liberties and have fun with your edit. For the orange hues, I want to nudge them a little toward red I often see yellows looking a bit more bronzy, orangey with the dark and moody edit, so we can pull the yellow hue slider to the left as well. For the greenery, we can either go towards a lush bluish green or a dead and rusty look. I want the well hydrated hue. That's as clear as I can make it. Let's move down to the saturation section. I mentioned earlier that moody photos often have less saturation across hues, so we can start by dropping most of these. Now greens are our foliage, so we don't wanna to lose too much there. I actually want to boost the yellows to make Rachel's jacket pop out a little, but I'm going to drop the orange saturation. So while the jacket is vibrant, it isn't as rich, if that makes sense. And then I'll just drop the reds to negative 30 or so. Next is luminance. Luminance essentially determines the lightness of these hue ranges, but I actually want to come back to this section. So now I want to do some photo specific masking. So I'll start with a linear gradient mask but I'll subtract our subject. Mm, it doesn't seem to be detecting our subject very well, so I'll just paint with a brush over here to add to our mask. Now for some adjustments. I'll lower the exposure a touch and maybe just a dab of dehaze. And let's bring out a little more color and detail in the sky. I'll create a new mask, this time by choosing Select Sky. I'll lower the exposure a lot then add some more dehaze. 
and some saturation. Since we wanna keep things moody around here, I'm gonna lower the luminance of the greens so the grass is a little darker. And that's about all we need to do here. How about a little color? In the shadows, I'll add some blue, maybe an eight for saturation. And this looks fine as is, but I think maybe a slight green cast on the global color wheel might be nice. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. What I do wanna see though is how these settings work on other photos so I can make a preset out of this since I'm not a big fan of editing from scratch on a photo by photo basis. I'll copy all of the non-photo specific settings, find another photo and paste them. This actually looks good. I might just lower the exposure so it's darker and moodier. And now one with more skin tones to be on the lookout for. And I think this will look better if I lower the highlights. Yeah but I really like the blues and greens on this one. If you decide you want a little more contrast in your image, you can simply increase the overall contrast in the basic panel, or you could increase dehaze, or whatever works best for you. The sponsor of today's video is Storyblocks. Storyblocks helps you bring your stories to life without sacrificing your vision due to time, budget, or resources. They have a massive, ever-growing library of stock footage, After Effects, and Premiere Pro templates, music, images, sound effects, and more, giving you everything you need to bring your stories to life. All assets are royalty free, so you can use your downloaded content anywhere for commercial and personal use, like finding the perfect moody shots to complement your moody photo editing. There we go. Regardless, there are subscription plans for every budget, like the unlimited all access plan, which gives you unlimited downloads to over one freaking million assets in their library. To check out Storyblocks for yourself and sign up for their unlimited all access plan, click the link in the description. That covers our process for creating a moody edit for your photos. What's fun about photo editing is it's up to you how you want your images to look and the more you learn about Lightroom, the easier it is to edit exactly how you want. If you like how we edit, we exclusively edit with our Lightroom preset collections that we have available at mangostreetpresets.com. We put a lot of time and effort into making them as good as possible, but I'll also include the one I made in this video for free down the link is below. If you would hit the thumbs up button on this video, that'll help out our channel and subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.